What's up guys welcome to Zionverse this is Shivam and let's talk about what blockchain is. So guys blockchain is a chain of blocks that contain information. Now blockchain is a very specific way actually of storing information that makes it very very difficult to hack, cheat or change the system. It works on a technology called as DLT, which stands for Distributed Ledger Technology. Now, what does that mean? Let's have a look. Guys, a distributed ledger is actually a set of transactions that are duplicated and distributed throughout the network on each computer system that participates in that network. So basically, each computer on the whole network is going to include a copy of the blockchain and a Copy of blockchain means what? It means every single transaction that has happened from that point to the kind of right at the start of that blockchain, right? So it's going to have all that information and every computer has that information. So what does that mean in terms of security and all of those things? Well, pretty simple guys. Every time a new transaction is introduced, all the computer systems, they are distributed a new copy of or an updated copy of the blockchain. So in case, one computer wants to cheat the system, the copy of the blockchain on their system is going to be different than all others. And what does that do? It tells us where the fault lies. That's one of the very, very important things that make a blockchain secure. Now let's look at the depth of how a blockchain works. Let's look at these things in detail. Now guys, the goal of a blockchain is very simple. It's to record information or record specific incidents that happened at very specific points of time and then record them in a way that they are not going to be changed by any one player or somebody who's trying to kind of one up the system. Now guys, very simply, let's say I do a Bitcoin transaction, right? I, I follow through with that transaction that transaction gets added to something that is called as mempool then validators now who are validators they are basically in very simple terms computer systems on the network that are going to perform specific calculations to validate that transaction and once that transaction is validated and agreed upon by the validators it gets added into the blockchain in a specific block and once it's get it gets added to that block the whole blockchain kind of gets distributed once again to all the computer systems on the network and that marks the completion of a transaction. Now one of the security features of blockchain is as I mentioned it's very difficult to go back and change a block. Let's say if I send you one Bitcoin right you can't go back and very simply on your own system say that Shivam actually sent you 10 Bitcoins. What will that do? If you do that one your blockchain is actually going to be different than all others on the network. That's one. Second, to be able to do that, blockchain is what? It's a ledger, right? So if I don't have 10 Bitcoin, there's nothing that can be done. Let's say if, even if I have 10 Bitcoin, right? Because it's a distributed ledger in very specific periods of time, there is nothing to be sent here. So there are two or three even more points of failure if you're trying to hack into the system. There is only one way you can hack into a proof of work based system, which is what we are talking about right now. And that's to control 51% of the network. And that's also one of the reasons why Bitcoin technically has never been hacked. Because to be actually able to influence and hack into the Bitcoin network, you need to control 51% of the validator nodes on the network itself and once you do that you are going to control majority or the most lengthy blockchain so the way these transactions actually work is the longest chain is the most true chain and the longest chain or rather somebody who has access to the biggest amount of information or has edit access to that biggest amount of information or basically let's say you have the longest chain on the network in simple words you are going to be able to deploy that longest chain as the true chain but nobody technically can get to that point so that makes bitcoin a very 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 secure way of providing information of course a lot of those 
specific pieces of information has to do with transactions but then there are also something such as smart contracts which are which we are going to talk about in the coming few videos in this series so stay tuned for those as well and you'll we'll talk about how smart contracts differ from the usual blockchain transactions that's something like bitcoin sends on layer one now what's layer one that's also something that we'll talk about pretty soon guys now guys a lot of people also confuse bitcoin with blockchain bitcoin is not blockchain bitcoin uses the blockchain technology to record all of those transactions or kind of maintain its ledger of transactions so whatever voting happens with the proposals with improvement proposals and whatnot all of that is stored on blockchain so bitcoin is technically not blockchain it does work on blockchain now how are they used who uses blockchains right now there are more than 10000 publicly listed and by publicly listed i mean on various exchanges crypto based projects that have their cryptocurrencies to run transactions to validate transactions to stake and validate transactions on their chains specifically but then these are public ones we also have private blockchains from players such as ibm walmart and whatnot there are also big huge banks that use blockchain to verify information and to keep information secure one of the key use cases that came out out of the pandemic, the recent pandemic for blockchain was to maintain a secure data of who got vaccinated, what was the case count and as well as the mortality rate and whatnot. Right? All of those things, if maintained on blockchain, kind of maintain that transparency for everybody to come in and see as well as kept all of that data secure and non-tamperable for a lot of other people a lot of companies did that internally as well so blockchain has a lot of use cases and a very very simple way to understand all of these use cases is going to be any place that requires a high degree of transparency a high degree of decentralization that means not one two or three players who control all the power and any place that has a lot of touch points so the more the touch points more the chance of something going wrong so a lot of touch points actually in case of a blockchain make it very very secure so those are our thoughts on on blockchains what blockchains are about the security and how transactions would work kind of in an overview or a nutshell right so there is of course in-depth content coming for you guys on this very channel so stay tuned for all of that we are going to get into what mempool is i used a lot of terms that you might not understand yet we are going to take all of those terms and we are going to get into the depths of every single thing that is blockchain and web3 stay tuned for all of that on our channel guys this is shivam from team zionverse signing off i'll see you guys next time